there everybody and thanks for watching. My name is Sam and I'm in client services here at the Retirement Group. I moderate these weekly webinars. Uh, in just a minute we're going to be joined by one of our senior advisors. His name is Patrick Ray and he's going to be speaking to United Health Group employees about some 2024 tax changes and updates that you should be aware of. Uh, before Patrick comes on I'd like to quickly remind you that although we work very closely with both active and retired uh, employees of United Health Group. The retirement group is not affiliated nor endorsed whatsoever by any specific company, so please keep that in mind as you listen along today. Um, after his presentation, I will rejoin Patrick very quickly to ask him some of the questions that are asked in the Q&A chat throughout the presentation, so please stick around if you'd like to listen to those. And uh, please follow us on YouTube, follow us on LinkedIn. You can book an appointment to speak with either Patrick Ray or one of his colleagues after this presentation as well. So please uh, take advantage of those resources. And with that, I'm going to now bring on our speaker, Patrick Ray. Hi, Patrick. Thank you very much, Sam. Good afternoon, everyone. Hopefully everyone's having a great day and we appreciate your attention this afternoon. And uh, Today, we've got uh, just an overview of some of the key 2024 tax updates that uh, will certainly be uh, relevant in some parts for some people rather than other parts. But uh, to give you kind of an overview, what we're planning on talking about today is uh, some specifics related to the standard deduction increases, uh, the marginal tax rates, which have changed, which have a lot to do with uh, typically our firm plans in the month of December with respect to Roth conversions and uh, specialized tax planning and things of this nature. Um, and so this would be relevant, of course, for uh, for those of you trying to maximize your tax brackets, for sure. Uh, retirement contributions have changed. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, we're going to talk and touch on the estate and gift tax changes. And we're also going to cover some special uh, tax provisions that should be uh, noted. And so the standard deductions have increased. And this is great because uh, many people, even though back in the day we used to be able to itemize our deductions, and oftentimes the itemization was over the standard deduction uh, uh, back in uh, several years back anyway. And uh, as we speak today, the standard deduction has gotten increased to 29200 for uh, a married couple filing jointly, and for a single and married filing separately, it's 14600 And then for our head of household, it's 21900 So this pretty much encompasses a very large percentage of the population with respect to how this ends up on your tax return and what best deduction uh, will take place for you and your family. Um, I mentioned the tax breaks and of course the tax brackets specifically have uh, been indexed and increased. And so you can see as uh, our married filing uh, jointly returns, the 10% bracket goes up to 23,200. And then we get an increase uh, up to 12% all the way up to 94,300, which used to be 87,000 last year. And then up to $201,050 to get to the 22% bracket. And then uh, it gets to 383.9 and 487.450, et cetera, right? But the thing I wanna point out here is the specifics as to how this um, relates to what's best for you, especially if you happen to be um, in a bracket that allows you some flexibility for Roth conversion some, and some additional tax planning, taking advantage of um, uh, excess gains that you may have in a given portfolio holding. And there's a lot to be said for these tax brackets and specifically um, maximizing the area that you end up uh, falling into. And we talk a little bit more about this in one of our presentations. And I know Sam had mentioned that uh, there'll be some additional uh, links into the chat to get access to those. And then uh, on the bottom part of this slide is the um, capital gains rates. And so those have been indexed for our married filing jointly people that uh, if it's less than 94,050, it's zero. And then uh, up to 583,750 will fall in the 15% bracket. And then everything over that 583,750 uh, is taxed at the 20% capital gains rate. So for marginal tax rates, of course, our top still remains at 37%, uh, and the adjustments have been all across the board with respect to all income tax brackets. And specifically, what is probably best for a takeaway here is to focus on the strategies that could be applicable for you and your family to reduce the ultimate tax liability that you may have, whether it be short-term or long-term or a combination of both. And so having said that, what we care about when you have retirement contributions, this is one of the uh, very easiest ways and immediate impacts that you can make with respect to how uh, you can get some tax break 
in the current environment, which is increasing your contributions. And you'd be amazed at how often we do reviews for people that have not increased their contributions, even though they've turned uh, 50, for example, and they can have a catch-up provision. So you see the second bullet point, uh, the catch-up provision for IRAs have been increased uh, by $1,000, and then for uh, retirement plans, it's $7,500 total. So having the built-in ability to, um, and some of your uh, plans, by, by the way, for some of you who are participating in this uh, call today, uh, will have this as an automatic option. So you can go into uh, Fidelity as an example and increase your contributions automatically so that every calendar year, it increases what you put in. And often what you don't see uh, doesn't really bother or hurt you in, in many of ways. And so in other words, if you don't consciously go in there and it just automatically happens, you'll get accustomed to the net pay that you ultimately get with uh, at the same time increasing your contributions to try to maximize the limits because the plan limits in uh, 2024 are 23,000 if you're under the age of 50. And then you've got this catch up provision up to $7,500 additionally uh, if you're over the age of 50. And so this just speaks volumes to the importance of increasing your contributions to try to uh, help you compile the biggest pool of capital that you ultimately have to rely on you walk off payroll at some point in time. So there's been some estate and gift tax changes and updates, and the current estate tax exclusion is a little north of $13.6 million. Um, but the one that is utilized quite uh, underutilized, I should say, is the annual gift exclusion. And for those of you who might consider giving money to uh, family members and, and these types of things, this should go into your planning as to, it used to be 15,000 and now it's been indexed all the way up to 18,000. So you can make some significant gifts to uh, parties that are important to you and your family to help you reduce the overall estate and potential tax issues that you uh, might face in the future. And so, um, Planning for estate and gift and tax efficiency and legacy planning and all of these things um, is is more and more important as we as we grow of age and our capital increases and the economy is doing well and you're doing well in your careers that you continue to boast the ability to plan for um, the most tax efficient environment that you can be and so this is why we talk a little bit about this of course not just in our presentation today. Uh, but some videos that we have that are on file in the event that you wish to look up, uh, you can look and uh, check those out at your convenience. So there's also been some special tax provi uh, provisions that have changed. The adoption credit has increased for those of you who are considering uh, adopting a, a family member. Um, there's also been some foreign earned income exclusions up to 126500 And again, these impacts are specific tax situations. And so depending on if they do or don't apply to you will be relevant to each individual as everyone is different. Uh, but certainly we wanted to bring that up as part of our conversation uh, this afternoon. And then from a strategic perspective, this is where you know the team uh, approach would come into play when you're looking for a partner in retirement, right? So um, some of you may be taking care of your own environment uh, from an investment perspective and from a planning perspective, and you might use uh, TurboTax to do your own taxes. And uh, you might find that at some point in your life, you wish to transition those services into the hands of a professional or a team of professionals. And so from a planning perspective, you know, tax planning tips with relationship to preparing for the upcoming tax season, and more importantly, to reflect on what you could have done that might be uh, an avenue for you to consider uh, making changes going forward. And so um, leveraging increased deductions and exclusions, this is a big deal, right? As tax brackets go up, it gives us more room to, um, to consider things like Roth conversions and taking advantage of um, uh, very highly appreciated stock in given scenarios. And so uh, certainly this is a, a big uh, tax planning tip that we uh, that we like to offer, obviously, as uh, as a help to the overall planning process. Reviewing your investment discussions uh, or directions as far as where you're saving your money, how much you're saving and where it specifically gets allocated to, especially if your plan has the option to participate in both the pre-tax side and the Roth 401k side. And then, uh, as I mentioned, you know, considering a, consult, uh, a consultation with a, a special uh, tax advisor or someone who does taxes, like a CPA of nature, um, would be certainly beneficial to uh, the overall process and a lot of these updates that may or may not apply to you.
So from a preparation perspective, organizing your tax documents early cannot be uh, a, a, a more emphasized. Uh, we get calls on a regular basis between the, you know, towards the end of January to the beginning of April on, uh, hey, I didn't get my 1099 or I overlooked my 1099 or I can't remember what I did with my 1099s. Uh, and then, of course, all of the other documents that are relevant to being prepared uh, to get your taxes filed. So this is um, organizing an, uh, a tax file specifically might help you uh, if you haven't considered that. And then, as, of course, the new deductions and all of the credits and some of the things that we've talked about today. And there's many, many other intricacies of, of the tax rules that have changed. Uh, which is why you may want to consider uh, hiring or uh, aligning yourself with a tax professional in an effort to help you so you don't get past this April 15th deadline uh, to cause problems uh, with the IRS. And so a recap of the key, of the key changes in 2024 uh, was mainly the increased contributions that you can make in your 401k. And I cannot stress to you um, how important this is, right? We have never, ever ran into someone who is retired with too much money. Let me repeat that. We've never talked to anybody who is retired with too much money, meaning that the more that you can pay attention to this and the more contributions that you can make, the bigger pool of capital that you're going to have to live and be comfortable and flexible when you ultimately decide to walk away from the payroll. OK, um, and then on a proactive side, the planning process where we know most people over the age of 50 don't have a written financial plan. Uh, firms like ours use this as a tool to interact with someone who might be considering having a partner in retirement to work through their scenarios and get specialized help. And that's obviously what, one of the many things that we do uh, to help folks. And as I mentioned just a minute ago, we know that 74% of the population over the age of 50 does not have a written financial plan. And really, there's no excuse for that because firms like ours do it for free. We do it as an introduction of our services to you. And if you're looking for a partner, it's a way for us to find out if there's a good fit. And frankly, this is something you want to do long before you decide tomorrow's my last day on the payroll. The end of April is my last day on the payroll. You want to have a partnership and a relationship built prior to that so you can set some expectations for one another and understand how the intricacies of a team uh, and a team environment would benefit you and your family. Um, and then the retirement group has been around for a very long time. We have tons and tons and tons of experience uh, myself, I've been in the business for over 25 years uh, and having the ability to bring to the table some knowledge on the specifics of your 401k plan and your health care benefits and your retirement plans and your pension plans and all of the things that you want to consider with respect to um, uh, what you need to focus on and think through when it comes time to make one of the most important financial decisions that you have to make, it couldn't be more crucial, right? And that's why our team at the retirement group that has uh, over 150 years of experience collectively uh, to be here to help you uh, make that transition, right? And then the thing that you might have is the biggest takeaway from what we have to offer is just a complimentary service of going through a financial plan uh, in the event that you haven't already done so. And if you've had one done and it hasn't been updated in the most recent 12 to 24 months, I would encourage you uh, to reach out to us. And you can do that by uh, emailing us at info at theretirementgroup.com. You can also call our 800 number, which is 800-900-5867. Uh, if you'd like to schedule some time to visit with myself or one of my colleagues, you can take a picture of this QR code to the left and it will get you access to a calendar where you can choose a time and a date that's convenient for you. And then if you're not already following us on LinkedIn, we have some company specific LinkedIn pages that would be extremely helpful, dependent on what company you work for, as we have updates on all kinds of tax and retirement benefit stuff and interest rates and the economy and just all kinds of um, uh, vital and great detail uh, that you might uh, find some benefit from uh, following us on our LinkedIn page there. And so with that, what I'll do is uh, I'll try to let you go for the afternoon. Um, in the event that we have some questions, I have a few minutes to be able to answer those. So I'll pass the presentation back over to Sam and uh, do our best to get you on after I answer a few questions, assuming we have them. Sam? Uh, yes, Patrick, let's answer just a couple questions. Um, this first one, my 401k contains a sizable portion of employer stock, which has greatly increased in value. How does this affect my... Uh, RMD or required minimum distribution if I continue to work after the age of 72. Yeah, so this is a great plan. And this is one of the things that have changed with respect to the age 72. And frankly, what used to be 70 and a half is the minimum distribution age. And today, currently, it's 73. And if you were born after January 1st of 1960, your minimum distribution age will be 75, actually. 
But as it turns out, to answer to your question, it's great that you see uh, a sizable portion of your uh, employer stock in, you know, increasing in value. And we've seen a lot of that in the most recent uh, tax year with some of the plans that uh, and companies specifically that we work with. But as a whole, all this means is, is that you're going to have a bigger minimum distribution requirement, right? There's not really a way for you to um, uh, address this other than to, to remove some of your individual stock by transitioning the money out of the 401k into an IRA, where you can specifically manage those holdings in a brokerage account, for example. But as a whole, if the value of whether it's in your employer stock or the holdings, uh, the underlying holdings in your 401k as a whole, if it increases in value, it's going to potentially increase uh, the amount of money that you're required to take out. So remember, as a uh, as a reminder, the required minimum distribution is a set number on the totals of all of your qualified plan money prior to December 31st of the previous year, right? So on December 31st, there's a valuation that can be had and your requirement is necessary for the following tax year, whether you take it in January or you can wait all the way up to December if you want. But the, the reality is that number is set in stone. So if during the year or the tax, the current tax year, your 401k is inflating in value, that's not going to impact your RMDs technically because it's already set in stone as to what that valuation and your required distribution amount will be for that tax year. So I hope that helps. All righty. Thank you, Patrick. Um, before I get to this last question, I wanted to just remind you all to please take a look in that uh, Zoom chat. There are lots of links in there for you to access and uh, get a hold of Patrick after this meeting if or after this presentation, if you'd like to book a meeting with him. Um, you can also follow the LinkedIn. Please follow us on YouTube, etc. We want to connect with you guys as many ways as we can. Uh, all righty, Patrick, last question. Should I change my contributions now that the IRA contribution cap is rising to 7,000 for 2024? And how will this impact my tax situation? Uh, yes, immediately. <laughs> um, the, the, should you change your contributions? Absolutely. Yeah. And this should be, if, if you will already do this, some, a, a unique uh, uh, tip might be to just set a reminder on your calendar on January 5th or something that's not the beginning of the, well, like not January 1st uh, because of it's a holiday, obviously, but January 5th or January 10th to remind you to increase your contribution limits if you want to manually go in there and do it. And as I mentioned during the presentation, there's also a lot of plans that have the ability to automatically increase it by a certain percentage every year without you doing anything. So automatically at a given time, it just increases from 4% to 5% or from 10% to 11% or whatever. Uh, so you can make changes. And yes, you absolutely should, given the um, the increase in exclusions and um, catch-ups and all that kind of stuff. It absolutely is something that you have to manage, uh, monitor and manage. And it's one of the biggest and best tips we can give you from a tax planning perspective. And oh, by the way, when you increase what you put into the 401k based on a pre-tax amount, it's going to reduce what you pay in income tax in this given year. So it helps you on both ends. So uh, great question. I hope that helped. All righty, Patrick, that was it. That was all of our questions for today. Okay. Wonderful. Well, we uh, appreciate you spending some time with us today. We hope that you found some value in what we had to talk about and feel free to reach out to us in any one of those ways I shared with you. Uh, if you'd like to spend some time with us for further questions and concerns, and we're delighted to do what we can to help. Thanks for your time. Have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Patrick. We hope to see you all again soon.